Good morning. Welcome to worship today at Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church. It's a joy to have you here with us, especially if you're visiting with us, we welcome you and hope you find a time in this time an encounter with the living, loving God. As you will notice today, we have um, made a few changes related to our COVID protocols and beginning today, we're inviting you that if you, that masks are now optional while you're inside uh, the building. So know that if, if you choose to continue to wear a mask, we support you and we welcome you to do that. But if you prefer not to, you're also welcome to take them off and know that our guidance related to that will be strictly followed by the CDC guidance related to different counties and their level of transmission. So if we find in the future that we need to re bring back masks as a requirement, we will do that, but we'll be sure to communicate that with all of you. And we thank you for your willingness to support and care for one another throughout this time. There are a lot of things happening in the life of our church. Let me mention a few of them to call them to your attention. One is, if you would, if you don't mind, sign the, take the fellowship pad that you'll find on the inside, on the center aisle of your pew and sign your name and pass it down the row so that you might be able to greet one another by name following the service. Um, also note that we continue to do our March Madness food bag challenge. Cookie Littlefield told me today that we are now over $2,300 that we have raised for Urban Ministries, so well done. And I would say for all of you who are Carolina fans, you should contribute a little extra this week. Um, yeah, so for all of those clapping and thinking, all right, we're watching you, just, you know. Even those of us whose teams lost this past weekend, we contributed, so you know, just saying. Um, but we're grateful for all of you for your, your generous support um, and continue to help those in our community. We have 11 days left with that challenge, so we hope you can contribute and support that as able. It's hard to believe, but Easter is not that far away. Uh, Easter is April 17th, and so we, the worship committee invites you, if you would like, to make a donation toward an Easter lily. You'll see an order form in your, on the purple insert. The deadline for those orders is this Friday, um, so that we have plenty of time to make sure um, that those orders are in and that we can receive the lily. So if you would, please take note of that and make sure those orders are in by the end of this week. And then finally, next Sunday, uh, we will have a new member class that will take place after the morning service in the fellowship hall. Um, if you've been visiting with us and you're interested in learning more about becoming a member of the church, this is a great opportunity to do so. I would ask, though, that if you're planning to come, please let me know uh, by Thursday. That way we can have planned for enough food for us as, as the evangelism committee will be hosting our lunch for that day. So those who are coming for the class, if you can, contact me this week, and that way we can plan for enough food for our time together. I would invite you to consider all the different activities and how you can become an active part of this congregation. Let us continue our worship now in a time of prayer and of meditation.
Please stand according to your ability and let us worship God. O oh God, you are my God. I see you. My soul thirsts for you. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. This is the day which the Lord has made. Friends, if we are honest with ourselves, we will acknowledge that we are sinful people. But our God is a God of love, and our God is a God of mercy, and our God is a God of grace. So then, we can with confidence approach God's throne of grace and honestly confess our sins. Let us do that first in unison from the bulletin and then silently from our hearts. We have tested your goodness, O God, and Christ our Savior. In that name we come asking forgiveness. We confess that we are greedy while others go hungry. The daily bread you give us is not enough. We must indulge our appetites. Our egos need feeding as well. We crave recognition and ignore our neighbors. Show us once more that Christ is our cup and our portion. May we find in him our heart's delight. Friends, we may rejoice 
that in the eyes of God, we are reconciled with God. We may close the door to our past and look with faith and hope to the future. My friends, believe the good news. Our sins are forgiven. And as forgiven people, let us exchange words and signs of reconciliation and peace with each other. And although the protocol has been uh, reduced, please feel free to do this in the way in which you are comfortable. May the peace of Christ be with you. be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come up and join me for a couple of minutes together. How are you all? You doing okay? You guys like to get the end of the pew, don't you? How's it going? Come on up. It's good to see everybody today. So, I've got a couple, I've got one thing I'm going to share with you, and then Miss Susan is going to share something that I think your Sunday school class worked on this, this morning, and she's going to invite you all to help us as well with doing something. So let me share with you, what have I got here? Good, I'm glad you recognize it's a fish, because I put it together and I wasn't sure if you would, if I did it right or wrong. Does anyone know... Anyone, we talked about this a few, some weeks ago. I'm not a fish fan, am I? I don't like fish. I know, and some of you do. But one of the things that this reminds me of is that Jesus, remember, who, did, who were some of the first disciples? What did they do? They were fishermen, weren't they? And this is, we're going to be collecting an offering in, on Easter Sunday. And it's called the One Great Hour Sharing Offering, and you'll see it there written on the fish. And what this is, it's a bank that I'm going to give to each of you to take home with you. Now, that doesn't mean that there's already money in it, okay? It's meant to be something that we put money into. And it's something that would, what I'm going to invite you all to do is maybe put that in your home, maybe put it on your dinner table or in your kitchen or wherever that you all see, and maybe... As, as you all get spare change throughout the week, think about dropping those in, yeah. Sure, you can put this outside the fish tank and make the, the other fish think, what is that outside my fish tank? Sure, sure, as long as you put money in it. I'm just kidding. So, but what I'm, what it, like, the reason we collect this offering, this is an offering that actually churches have been collecting for more than 75 years. And it's not just Presbyterian churches, it's churches all across the world. And it's one of the offerings that we collect that in our church we use for three different reasons. One is to help people when they experience natural disaster. So many you maybe remember there were the tornadoes that happened in Kentucky and other parts of the country before Christmas. There have been, when there have been natural wildfires, things like that. We send monies from our church to help those people in times of need. The other thing we help with is people who are hungry. And we do a lot around here we've talked about for folks who are hungry. This is another way that we try to help those in other parts of the world who are hungry. 
And then third, we help people who maybe don't have the other resources that we have to help with um, getting clean water, getting food that's available to them, other resources that we take, it, take for granted. So we'd use this money in the national, across the country and across the world to help those folks. So I'm gonna invite you to take a bank, take one each. You're welcome. And there are plenty here that I'm gonna put at the end of the service out in the narthex that if folks want to take one for their homes and use them, you can take one and, and, and then use this to help collect offering over the course of the next few weeks, okay? Can each of you take one? And I have a feeling you all will be able to figure out how to put these together. And if not, you probably have adults in your house who can help you figure that out. Oh, I don't know what that is. You can have that too. But maybe that one will work. There you go. Yeah. And now I'm going to invite Miss Susan to come down because she's got something fun, I think, that also ties in to us thinking about Easter as well. And let me turn the mic on for you. There you go. Fun. Thank you. And I need the mic because we're inviting you all to our K through 2 Sunday School class that we had this morning. We had a lot of fun, didn't we, those of you who were there? Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you children is what day are we celebrating today? I wore celebration shoes and I brought in a celebration. You don't, I don't know either. But what do we celebrate today? Look what's happening. It's springtime. This is our first day of spring. And I want you to tell you a secret, sort of a secret, is that every Sunday we are very, very fortunate that we can have a special celebration here in church. What do we celebrate every Sunday? Yes? We celebrate God's love for us, don't we? And so I, wanted, we, I told the story this morning. It's from um, the book of Luke. And it's when Jesus told a story about a man who invited all of his friends to a party and no one showed up. And then Jesus went back and, and the man went back and invited everybody else that was in the village from the streets and from the restaurants or from the homeless shelters and from the outskirts and from the forest. Sometimes we have homeless people on our forests around here or woods. And all these people came to God's, to, to the man's party to celebrate together. Today we're going to we're going to talk about celebrating God's love here at Western Boulevard. We have a welcome sign for all the new people that come to our church to come in, and they can find God, find out that God loves them here at church every Thank Sunday. You. Thank you. Now, everybody has an assignment, okay? We have invitations, and everybody needs to think about one to five people to invite to our weekly celebration here. And I will leave a big stack out in the narthex for you to pick up, and, um, but I'm gonna give a couple to each child so that they can take it home. You're responsible for decorating it. <laughs> You're responsible for putting a friend's, friend's name on it and, and passing them out to people that you know you would love to have join this celebration here at church. And the thing is, Easter is our biggest celebration of the year. So you might want to invite people for that service as well. Let me hand these out, and thank you for listening so well. Would you like some? Wonderful. There you go. You guys think of some friends, okay, that you can hand these out to. That's a key ring. You can have two friends. Invite two friends. Okay? Invite as many friends as you want. And there will be you have a lot of friends? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. Put, I'm gonna put this stack um, in the back yep. so you all can take an invitation. If the kids need extra ones, they Wonderful. can. Wonderful. 
Thank, thank you, Miss Susan. Can you put those back in the narthex <laughs> on the stand? Thank you. Thank you. No. Let's say a prayer together before we go, okay? Let's all say a prayer. Let, loving and gracious God, we thank you for the many ways that you show us your love. We are grateful that we can return thanks by offering our gifts back to you as we look forward to Easter and filling our banks with coins for the One Great Hour sharing offering and inviting new people to come and experience your love in this place. Help us every day to shine that love in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. The congregation says? What do we say? So with you. And did, some, did you need another bank? Did you need one? There you go. Grab a new one. Cool. Put the old one in there. All right. I'll let you guys head back to your seats or, or to head for Children's Chapel. I think Mr. Andrew is going to take you back today. Okay? Have a great week. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy God, humble us and open us to your life-giving word. As we hear your word read and proclaimed today, may our hearts and minds be open to the Spirit's moving and Jesus' teaching. Amen. The Old Testament lesson on this third Sunday of Lent is from the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 9. Uh, the prophet is addressing the Judeans, but not exclusively so. He is making a call for repentance and giving an invitation to the more abundant life offered by God. And the marketplace is used as imagery to compare and contrast uh, what God has to offer with what the world offers us. Listen for the word of God. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast love, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I had a unique opportunity last year which not a lot of ministers are presented with. For more than five months, I didn't have responsibilities on Sundays. When I finished my call in Indianapolis, I approached the weeks and the months that followed them kind of like a sabbatical. And sometimes we would attend different church services, and other times I would do other activities on the weekends. 
And I can say for the first time in my life, I actually played golf on Sunday mornings. But what I appreciated most about that time last year was the opportunity it presented to observe others and what they chose to do on Sundays. Families walking or hiking on the greenways or in a state park. Couples having brunch at their favorite restaurants. Neighbors doing yard work or inviting family members over for get-togethers. People doing things to replenish their emotional energy before the start of another week. For me, it was like peeling back and seeing what it's like on the other side of the curtain. And it made me wonder what we can do as the church for all of these folks who are searching for rest and renewal. When do you find yourself most empty? When you're physically tired from illness or work or stress? When you're emotionally drained from family concerns or strained friendships or worry or anxiety for yourself or others? When you're spiritually spent from struggling to understand why God allows trials and tribulations to happen to you or to your loved ones or to innocent human beings? What do you do to fill the emptiness? Do you fill the emptiness with meaningful relationships? Do you fill the emptiness with material possessions or with comforts? Do you fill the emptiness with behaviors or habits which are destructive, either to yourself or to those whom you love? There is much which causes emptiness in our lives, and there are many ways that we seek to fill that emptiness. As Daryl Tremieu says, where we seek fulfillment in our emptiness says a great deal about our sense of dependence on God. In the modern world, even on Sundays, even in Lent, people crave satisfaction. Perched alertly and anxious, anxiously on their pews, the devout seek a word from the Lord. We seek God's presence. Afterwards, we will rush out to Sunday brunches or loll around poolside, regrouping, recreating, and recomposing ourselves after the helter-skelter hustle of the week. All week we've worked and struggled, compromised and sought approval, earning our sustenance and paychecks from a world of competition. All week we have done what was necessary to buy what we need and to provide what is demanded of us. We try to please those over us so we may obtain what we need, what we believe will give us satisfaction. Yet on Sunday we find ourselves spent, drained, and still thirsting for more. <coughs> Excuse me. Perhaps Isaiah received this word from God after visiting a market. Even without mass media, the ancient market square was busy with commerce, with people rushing to buy, struggling to sell, and some, with no assets at all, standing off at the margins, perhaps begging for a handout so that they too might taste their daily bread. Like Isaiah, we are all finite creatures beset with daily needs. Never are we free from want. Even in the Lord's Prayer, we ask, give us this day our daily bread. God could have created us without these needs, without these drives, but God did not. 
God wants us to depend on God. When Isaiah wrote this prophecy, it was at a time of exile for the Israelites. They had been taken away from their homeland by the Babylonians as they had forsaken God in their faithful obedience. They had lived in Babylon for over 60 years in a foreign culture under foreign rule, and for many, they had likely forgotten what home truly was. This passage is written at the end of that exile as soon as the Israelites as soon the Israelites would return home to their promised land. That context helps us to explain more of the imagery which Isaiah uses in this passage. As residents in a foreign land, the Israelites would have likely paid exorbitant prices for the basics of life, for bread, wine, milk, and so on. The Lord sets forth a new vision of how they might live as God's people. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Instead of filling themselves with food that only satisfies for a brief time, they are invited to eat what is good and delight themselves in rich food. For that food is not what can be bought in the marketplace, but is the word of God, a spiritual nourishment which lasts a lifetime. Incline your ear, come to me, listen, so that you may live. The Lord reminds his people that just as God made an everlasting covenant with his servant David, so too will God renew his covenant with them now. As a result, nations that they did not know will come to Israel because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. And Isaiah interjects his own voice in verses 6 and 7, imploring his people to seek out God with this new opportunity that's before them. Seek the Lord while God may be found. Call upon him while God is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. There was a reason they were in exile. They had forsaken God. Now the prophet begs of them to not forsake God again, but to return to the Lord that God may have mercy on them, for God will abundantly pardon. Daniel Du Bois writes, Isaiah's offer, it's unlike anything we know or practice. In his vision, everyone who's thirsty gets water. Everyone who is hungry is invited to eat, buy milk and wine without money. It's like a grocery store where everything is free. In this supermarket, all the people who stand by the side of the road with little cardboard signs that say will work for food they're pushing carts full of groceries through the checkout lines paying only with a smile and a wave in contrast to what is available for free Isaiah says we are paying for things that we do not need in the first place spending money on what is not bread and laboring for what does not satisfy us Isaiah says we need a new diet of good and rich food. Have you ever gone to visit someone at home and as soon as you sit down in the living room, your host offers you something to drink? Your answer may be based on whether, you are, whether or not you are thirsty, but more on how long you want to stay. <laughs> Even if you decline, your host may persist. In this passage, Isaiah leans across the coffee table and says, hey, stop it. Whether or not you're thirsty, whether or not you're hungry, you need what God has to give. This is a very Lenten passage, if you think about it. During the Lent, we are 
called to consider how we are filling ourselves with maybe what isn't nourishing, with what isn't fulfilling. It's like how the message interprets the second verse of this passage. The message says, why do you spend your money on junk food, your hard-earned cash on cotton candy? We're invited to put those things aside. As the prophet puts it, to stop spending money on that which we do not need. Instead, we're called as God's children to feed on what is true and real for our spiritual journey. God's love, which we know in Jesus Christ. It echoes what Jesus said in the Gospel Gospel of John. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We're promised a new life full of hope, just as Isaiah foretold it to the Israelites. But it is a hope that requires action and response and faithfulness to fully appreciate God's grace, a total and complete return to the Lord. I believe another reason Isaiah spoke this word of hope and repentance to the Israelites was due to the situation that they found themselves in in Babylon. For more than 60 years, they lived in a foreign culture and likely had forgotten the practices which were instrumental and foundational for their faith. They probably had adopted some habits which were more about their comfort and acquiescing to the dominant culture rather than acting in ways that were full of integrity as it related to their faith in God. Isaiah not only promised them a return to their home but also directed them to reclaim their faith in the midst of these dominant cultural forces. We live in a world today that many times can feel counter-cultural to our Christian faith. I wonder sometimes if we have become too enculturated and comfortable with all that surrounds us. Although we recognize that We cannot foretell what the future holds. It feels as if we are moving back toward more normal routines and activities as we come out of or continue to live with this pandemic. And we witness that with our daily lives as we schedule ourselves. We schedule our children and our families with a multitude of activities so that we don't miss out on any opportunities. We're seeing that in the church's life. As after two years of limited in-person gatherings, we are ramping back up to near pre-pandemic levels of activities. I've heard many of you say how Western Boulevard is a small church that functions like a big church with lots of activities and opportunities for everyone who comes. And from my first few months of serving alongside you, I would agree with that statement. I also have heard others comment on how one benefit of the pandemic was that it forced all of us to slow down as individuals, as a community, and yes, as the church. Indeed, I wonder if one of the lessons we might take with us from the past two years is whether the busyness of pre-pandemic life is healthy for any of us to return to. How do we find balance 
balance between active engagement and taking time for renewal? How are we called to meaningful ministry that doesn't just fill up space on the calendar so that we are energized to serve God in ways that fill us and others with the life-giving waters which God promises to us. In this Lenten season, how are you called to feed your faith? How might God be calling you to quench your thirst in the life-giving waters of God's love? We've been given the gift of hope and promise of new life. How will we reorient our lives so that we might return to the Lord with our entire being? Thanks be to our God who invites us to the life-giving waters so that we might be replenished and renewed and revived as God's beloved children. Amen.
in response to God's love and God's word, let us affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which you'll find printed in your bulletin. Friends, what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As we prepare to turn our hearts and minds to God in prayer, let me share with you some prayer concerns that are part of our life together and then invite you to share any that we might all know of them as a community of faith. We especially today remember and surround with our prayers Linda Preston as her longtime companion, E.K. Howard, who we knew well here at Western Boulevard, um, died unexpectedly on Tuesday from a heart attack. We surround Linda with our prayers and as she deals with the shock and with uh, E.K.'s family. And we saw an obituary was printed this week in the paper and it noted that a memorial service will be held on Saturday, April the 9th at 11 o'clock a.m. at Christ Episcopal Church where E.K. was a faithful and longtime member. So our prayers continue to surround Linda and all of those, all of us who grieve his sudden loss. We also remember Lewis Alexander. Lewis had outpatient surgery this past week and is recovering at home and doing well, and he appreciates your ongoing prayers. We remember Peggy Stevens, who had been hospitalized this past week after having a fall at her home and breaking some ribs. Peggy uh, has now been moved to Rex Rehab in Apex, and I spoke with her this morning, and she also appreciates your ongoing prayers as she recovers uh, from this fall. And I would ask that you remember John Aldridge. Um, learned this weekend and I spoke to him this morning. John is a patient at UNC Rex Hospital. John is experiencing more significant weakness, extreme weakness in his legs, which he has struggled with for some time. And he went to the hospital Friday evening and is, having, is undergoing tests there. So would ask for prayers for him and Janice as he undergoes those tests and awaits word and knowing what is to come. Are there others whom you might mention that we might be aware of them this morning? Okay, I will invite Robert to lead us in our prayers today. This morning, our prayers of the people will be in responsive form. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, if you will, say, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in his name. Confident in your love and mercy, we offer our prayers on behalf of your world, your people, and all those entrusted to our care. Hear the cries, holy God, of our planet, struggling to survive. Give us, who consume most of the Earth's resources, the will to reorder our lives, that the environment might be protected and natural resources renewed. May all your people have their rightful share of food, medical care, shelter. May all your creatures and all creation know our care and respect. Lord, in your mercy, Renew our nation, sovereign God, and the ways of justice and peace. Guide those who make and administer our laws to build a society based on trust and respect. Erase prejudices that oppress. Free us from crime and violence. Guard our youth from the perils of selfish individualism and material hoarding. Motivate all citizens to end our 
debilitating division, promote productive and respectful debate, and work towards the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy, strengthen this congregation, O God, in its work and worship. Fill our hearts with your self-giving love, that our voices may sing your praise and our lives conform to the image of your Son. Nourish us with your word and sacraments that we may faithfully minister in your name and witness to your love and grace for the world. Lord, in your mercy, sustain those among us, living God, who need your healing, make the sick whole, give hope to the dying, comfort those who mourn, uphold all who suffer in body or mind, in this global moment ravaged by war, bless those who work for peace, heal those traumatized by violence, secure those whose lives and livelihoods are in jeopardy. And we especially pray for those in Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, O oh God, in your loving purpose, answer our, our prayers and fulfill our hopes in all things for which we pray. Give us the will to seek to bring them about for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And hear us now as we join with Christians everywhere, praying the prayer Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, freely we have received. Freely let us give. Let us present our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we come with hearts filled with gratitude for all that you have given us. We return a portion of the gifts for the work of your church and for the ministry of Jesus in the land. In Christ's holy name, amen. Friends, go from this place in peace, trust, and serve the Lord. The love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.